Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at this testing arrangement we've got here. Now, the thing at the back here has been in a previous video, which basically explains how that actually works. And uh, obviously, just refer to that video if needed. Now, what we've got here at the moment is this plug in here. It's just the basically shorted loop of wire. And then all we've got basically then is this heater plugged in here. It's that silver thing which we've seen before. And then this other lead just goes to this uh, multifunction tester that we've got here. And all of this is supplied via this Hager RCD. This is a fairly old one, picked because it uh, actually is an old one. The rest of the equipment we'll have a look at in a moment. Now to start with, what we can do is just do a ramp test on this, which will determine the current at which that actually trips. Now this is a 30 milliamp RCD, so it should trip somewhere greater than 15 milliamps, but uh, obviously not greater than 30, so in that sort of range. So if we uh, turn this on to the uh, ramp testing uh, position here, and we'll just put the power on as well. Now we can turn on the uh, RCD over there like that. Now this one is actually a faulty one because the button on the front is actually bust, but uh, the thing itself does actually work. And we've got the heater switched on as well. Now strictly we don't need the heater turned on for the test, but we're going to leave it on anyhow for consistency when we do the bits uh, we have later. So we're just doing the uh, ramp test here. So just press the uh, testing button and see what the current trips at actually is. So just takes a moment. So currently there are 21 milliamps, so that's perfectly within the specification of the device, so again, no problem with that. Now the purpose of that test was just to confirm that what we've got here is reasonably consistent with uh, what we've just tested there. So just remove the uh, loop of wire from the uh, testing outlet here, and instead of that wire, we're going to plug in this piece of equipment here, and just shove that in the front here. Now this has uh, three knobs on the front here for adjustments. On the back here we've got the wire goes in. This socket here is what we can then plug this or something else into. And the purpose of this is it's also got these two test connections here, which are uh, two red sockets. And this goes over to the multimeter there. And this is so that we can measure current. And the point of this is that uh, most of the current will just flow in the normal way. But by adjusting the knobs on the front here, we can then simulate a fault to earth. So in theory we can then set this up, adjust the knobs here to get the uh, appropriate fault current, increase that gradually and see when the RCD actually trips. So a very similar thing to that uh, Mega we just used. So let's see what kind of uh, results we get with this. So we're going to use that same uh, shorting lead there, so basically just a direct connection. Same heater we had previously, and uh, so the current now should be displayed over there on the meter. So if we just turn on the supply, so it's uh, operating normally there, and we can see over there on the meter we've got 4 milliamps there, or just about 5 milliamps, so obviously it's not tripping. And if we turn this knob here on the right, we should see the current increase, and as it gets to a certain point, then the RCD of course will trip. So uh, current increasing away there. So coming up to 10, 11, 12, 13. We've gone to the uh, second knob there. So 16. I've moved to about 21, so it should trip uh, any moment. Okay, so that was 21 again. So again, consistent with what we had uh, previously. If we try and reset that, then it will trip straight away. Just turn the current back a bit. So again, we'll just try that again, just uh, slowly increase the current there. Yep, so just about 19 or 20 there. So uh, fairly consistent with what we had previously. Just ready to confirm that what we've got here is actually working as intended. Now the reason there's three knobs here is because uh, this thing is not linear in the way it operates. So we've actually got three knobs here. This is basically, you might think of it as a sort of fine adjustment sort of a more coarse adjustment and then a more coarse there, but in reality it's uh, this can be used for all the adjustments and these two determine what sort of current range this one actually has. But suffice to say, turning these knobs varies the current up and down, exactly how they work, in which order isn't desperately important here. Now this is a type AC RCD and that's by far the most common type, as although other types are available and have been for quite a long time, most common type of store was the type AC, and if you were going to go and buy one of those sort of consumer units with the two RCDs in, it's almost inevitable that it would have been a type AC as well. 
And as the name suggests, the type AC RCD is only designed to work when you have AC going through it. Now that may seem obvious, but of course other types of faults uh, do exist. And uh, more specifically, you can have things like uh, pulsed DC, which is where the type A RCD would come in. So let's see what happens now. So just remove this uh, solid link of wire, and we're going to use instead this plug. Now this plug has a diode inside instead. So uh, by installing that, then uh, essentially what we're going to do is run the heater on approximately half power, because obviously uh, it's only going to get pulses of power rather than the full AC waveform. And then we'll see if this thing will trip or not. So again, if we turn on the uh, power here, so starting out with just about a couple of milliamps of fault current there. The heater itself obviously is running on uh, whatever the current it's using, which is several amps in this case. So let's just turn the uh, justifying knob here. Now, of course, the overall current will be less because it's just going to be about half we have there. So five milliamps there to turn the next uh, adjusting knob. Uh, see so the current will increase. Uh, that's 10, 11, 12, and so on there. So that's sort of 16. And uh, just turn the knob on the end here. Now, being in mind, it tripped around the 20 or 21 milliamps mark previously. So we're just coming up to that now. But uh, as you can see, we can go in past that particular level there, so 25, 26, so now over 30 milliamps, so this is beyond the specification of the device, it should have tripped uh, long ago by now, and we can continue turning the knob and uh, increasing the current further, so that's over 60 milliamps, so that's double what this thing should have tripped at, but of course it's not actually tripping, and this is because it's a type AC, and obviously we're not putting AC through it, and bearing in mind all we've got in here is literally one diode, the sort of thing you would have in an electric heater to select, say, a full or half power setting. It was very common in uh, older type heaters and things like hair dryers or whatever. Just have a uh, single pole switch with a diode across it. When the switch was closed, it was full power. When the switch was open, then uh, that was half power. So as you can see there, nothing uh, tripping there whatsoever. And so that's on around 63 milliamps. So that's certainly a bit of a fail. Let's turn that back down to zero. Now what we've got here is another electric heater, so it's plugged into the other power outlet here. So this is actually somewhat more powerful, so turn off that one and uh, put the other one on instead. We can see the current leakage there is around 8 milliamps on the minimum setting, because like, this particular heater is around a 3 kilowatt model, considerably more powerful, so the current sharing is the uh, same ratio, but obviously with more current in the heater, more fault current as well. So we're already on 9 milliamps, so let's just uh, crank that up and see uh, what we get. So that's around 24 milliamps there, that's way above what it tripped at previously. We turn the uh, centre knob here, and we see now it's well into the sort of 40, 50 milliamps range, 60 milliamps of fault current there, and anyway, that's basically going to earth and bypassing the RCD, so 60 milliamps should have tripped at uh, LC30. And we can turn this knob here as well, continue turning up there, so that's uh, coming to 100 milliamps there. And we continue turning the knob even further, and in fact turn it all the way around to uh, 222 milliamps, and the RCD isn't actually tripping. And what we can also do is turn on the other heater as well, and now we've got a total current of 290 milliamps of fault, but again it's not tripping because uh, it's not designed to work on pulse DC. Now uh, just turn our knobs back the other way. What we can also try is the other plug is this one. This also has a diode in, but it's in the opposite direction. Will this make any kind of difference while well, power's still on? So let's just turn on here. Let's crank the knob to full already. So there's your 30 milliamps, 40, 50, 60, 70. And we'll just turn this knob here. Just quickly crank that round to the full power. Yep, 230 milliamps. And turn on the other heater as well. Fault current there around 300 milliamps or so. And uh, no, it's not tripping at all, so that's 10 times the actual rated current of this thing, yet it's not actually tripping. And in terms of the heater, so there's the heater down there on the floor, that's just one of them. And if we turn off the thing, you'll see it does uh, turn on and off, so definitely working there. So there we have it, that's just a uh, quick demonstration of the fact that uh, a Type AC RCD, or at least certain types of Type ACs, work perfectly on AC, but as soon as you start putting things like pulse DC through there, even from a single diode, they don't actually trip at all. And so we have that up to our 300 milliamps, so that's 10 times the current that it should have tripped at. 
Now I've tested a few other of these, just some random ones had banging around here, and uh, this particular one is a fairly old one and does not trip at least up to around 300 milliamps. A couple of others I tried, uh, one of them did trip, but uh, it tripped around the uh, sort of 25 milliamps on the AC, and on pulse DC it would actually trip around 32 or so, so that was slightly over, but at least it did actually trip. And then another, it was actually an RCBO I got, uh, that actually tripped uh, rather bizarrely at two completely different current levels, so uh, again that was rather undefined behaviour. So that's all we're going to do for this particular time, but the uh, objective is this, is to get a whole selection of RCDs, both old, new and whatever, of the types that's most commonly installed in probably millions of properties all over the country, and then actually see how they respond to post DC. And as we've seen here, this one doesn't work, and some of the others say it did work, but not in the way you would necessarily expect. Now RCDs in general, of course, are pretty much standard equipment these days, and they're mostly the type AC we've got here. And uh, at one time that was probably fine, because most equipment just was things like heating elements and that kind of thing. But uh, in terms of where you can find diodes or rectifiers these days, unfortunately it's pretty much every piece of equipment in your house, because even things like lighting now, LED lighting of course, it's uh, got at least a rectifier or some kind of diode in there. The LED itself of course uh, is a diode. And what this kind of represents here is to say this is basically a heater with say a half uh, wave rectifier in it for a half power setting. And all this is representing is a fault within that heater when it was on half power, say a fault from the element to the metal casing or something. So even as simple as an uh, electric heater can have, say, just a single diode in it, and then if you look at any kind of electronic equipment it's going to have usually a full wave rectifier in there, and say anything like LED lighting and things, again it's going to have uh, a rectifier in there of some kind. And then even if you go things like electric ovens and cookers, yeah they still have standard heating elements in, but uh, in most cases, in fact, or at all cases, they're going to have an electronic clock on the front, which of course is going to have a power supply inside which contains one or more diodes or rectifiers. And then of course you go down the road of things like uh, USB chargers and all kind of other equipment. So the prevalence of uh, semiconductors and in more specifically uh, diodes and rectifiers, they're in pretty much everything these days. So this type of fault where you've got either pulse DC you've got from this single diode, or even just uh, smooth DC going through the RCD, is something which is going to be fairly likely, and in some cases almost inevitable given the say, huge prevalence of electronic equipment these days. So that's it for this video. Let's say we'll be seeing this setup again, and until then, thanks for watching.